Good morning, St. John's, and a Merry Christmas to you indeed. In my first few years at St. John's, we had a tradition that sadly has fallen out, and that was on Christmas morning, the service would be a blessing of the toys, where families would come and children were encouraged to bring whatever their favorite Christmas present had been that morning, and they'd bring it forward and I would bless it. And I'd always take an opportunity to talk to the child about the toy, to hear about what it was that they loved about it, and then to make a kind of spiritual reflection based on that and to say a blessing. And I remember one year, Ingrid Nohara came forward with this toy, and honestly, I couldn't figure out what it was. It was just the strange looking thing, and so I asked her what it was, and she was explaining it to me, and it still didn't really make sense to me what this toy was, so I finally said, what do you do with it? And she looked at me, up at me, kind of pityingly, like she was tolerating being in the presence of someone so foolish. And she said, you love it. And I got to tell you, I've always remembered it. That answer has, in some ways for me, become the basic message of what Christmas is. How does God regard us, God's creatures? He loves us. There's simply nothing else to be done but to love us, as Ingrid loved that toy. And I look at what Jesus did, that he came to love us. That's the heart of it all. And I've been contemplating lately what a willing spirit that was, because of course we know that the life he would live with us as one of us was not an easy one. It was filled with real temptation, real frustration, real pain, real anger. And I don't know who or what the pre-incarnate Christ was. I don't know what it would mean for Jesus to tell the Father, I am willing. But he did. He was willing. And in putting himself into human form as one of us, he loved us to the end. And I think part of the marvel of Christmas is not simply that we worship and give thanks, which we do, quite rightly so, but there's also a sense where we say, we want to join you in what you do. Because if we think he did everything on our behalf, there's a sense of, good, now I don't have to. <laughs> but in reality, what he's showing us is, I am the face of the Father. I am leading you in paths of holiness. And what he showed us at Christmas is this willing spirit to join us in love. And so for us too, we don't have to be wildly faithful or triumphant <laughs> in all our Christian doctrine or whatever. I think it is sufficient to say, I am willing, particularly in the face of things that are threatening and hard. I remember a few years ago, uh, I was shopping at Costco, as one does, and, uh, and from a distance I saw this man who had hurt me uh, some years before. We weren't in any context where we saw each other regularly, but I saw him at the end of the aisle uh, and avoided him. Uh, but then began to pray quite honestly to God, God, I don't like him because he hurt me. But I am willing. And by it, there's a sense, I am willing to love him as you love him. I don't know what that looks like. I can't contrive of it, but I'm willing. And a little while longer on the same trip, we bounced into each other and now it was impossible to avoid him. And we began talking and my spirit had the same posture, God, I'm willing. I don't know what the conversation must include. I don't know if there needs to be reconciliation here. I don't have the wisdom for it, but I'm willing. And the conversation went on pleasantly for about 10 minutes. Nothing substantial happened in it. But at the end of it, I loved him more than I had 10 minutes before. And I think that is what Jesus is inviting us to as I am willing to join you in this human life. So may you join me 
and living your truest human life, which I will show you in everything I do. And because of who Jesus was and continues to be in us and through us, we have hope that love is the truest, most powerful, most worthy, and most accessible gift of God. So for this Christmas morning, I simply share the words of the prophet Isaiah. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of his increase, of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, upstanding, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Amen and a Merry Christmas. <laughs>